Hello and welcome again to Praxis Group International, where I teach you exactly what ETS requires of you to earn a respectable passing score on your TOEFL IBT. Hello, my name is Mr. Hearn and I am your TOEFL tutor. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to earn a passing score on the speaking section. Now, if you're like most of my students who are pharmacists, dentists, teachers, some engineers, then you're likely going to have to score a 26 or higher on your TOEFL IBT. If you've been struggling with earning a 22 or 24 and you just can't get past that 25 mark to get to the 26, this is the video for you because I'm gonna teach you why you haven't been able to get to there and show you exactly what you need to do to get to that next level so you can get on with your life. So let's talk about the TOEFL speaking section. What is it that's preventing you from passing this test? Now, there are two things. One, maybe your English just isn't good enough at this time, and you have to practice and improve your English abilities. Now, that may be possible, but the most common thing that prevents people from getting a higher score on the TOEFL IBT is that you just don't know what's required of you. There's a lot of misinformation going on out there from other tutors that are teaching things that, as I watch these videos of these other teachers and telling people what to do, I'm like, oh my goodness, no wonder. No wonder you're not passing. The things they're teaching are flat out wrong. If you've heard people teaching you that you can use a template and pass your test, it's absolutely false. In fact, it's counterproductive because ETS knows the templates that people are using, and they tell you, do not use memorized responses. In fact, ETS considers using templates a sort of a form of cheating, and you'll never score more than 22, at the most 24, if you get away with it, but hey, they have rules. And if you know the rules, you can answer the questions quickly, easily, and accurately without using templates. Also, you may be using those uh, fancy vocabulary words that are guaranteed to give you a high score, and they don't. Well, I hate to say it, you know, but those people are making a lot of money selling you something that just isn't going to work. What does work is knowing the rules that ETS has for answering the questions and following the rules. What ETS really wants to know is, hey, can you take accurate notes and are you able to answer the questions the way we want you to, according to the rubric or the rules. And if you could do that, they say, oh, you know the rules, you may pass. And if you don't know the rules, they say, you don't know the rules, you're gonna have to test again. So that's what I teach you. I teach you how to take notes in the way that ETS wants you to respond. And I teach you the rubrics so that you know what the graders are thinking and how they use the rubric to give you a score. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the things that prevent you from getting a passing score other than using those templates or fancy vocabulary words. One of the main problems that prevents you from passing the test is if you're nervous. You're nervous, and I know when the camera comes on, <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time, and when the camera comes on, I'm nervous. The only thing that helps me is I'm talking to you and I'm helping you to get a higher score. And so when you turn on that uh, recorder on the test, maybe you get a little stage fright and you wanna go, uh, 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 um, I don't know what to say. You're trying to give a perfect score, but every time you try to give a perfect score, you keep screwing it up. I know that happens a lot. How do we overcome that? The way we overcome anxiety is to know what's required of us and practice doing it until it becomes natural. One of the big problems that you may have is that you don't really know what's required of you. You may be trying to give the perfect score, right? The perfect response. Well, the only perfect response is the one that obeys the rubric. And if you don't know exactly what's required of you, you're gonna be nervous. So I teach you exactly what's required of you. What's the other thing other than stage fright? What is it that can prevent us from getting a high score? Not knowing what to say or how to say it. 
you may speak English perfectly as well as I or better and yet get a low score. And you're wondering why, why am I not getting a high score? It's because ETS has very specific requirements of how they want you to respond. And if you give a very excellent response, but you don't give it in the way they want, you're going to test again. So it's very important that you know exactly how ETS wants you to respond. Now, I don't teach you what I think you should do. I don't teach you how I think you should respond. I don't teach you what someone else told me that I should teach you how to respond. I teach you exactly what ETS requires of you because with 15 years of experience in counting and having been a TOEFL testing center, I have an inside idea of what is exactly expected of you. And so I can teach you those things and I can teach you in a way that it's possible for you to do it. You know, everything is hard until you know how to do it and you practice a little bit. So I take a very complicated test and I simplify things and I break it into pieces so you can just answer the question one piece at a time in the way that ETS requires you to do so. All right, let's see. Is there anything else that I can help you with at this time in this video? Let's talk about the individual question, shall we? How about question number one? How do you feel about question number one, first of all? It's challenging because they don't give you any information. They just give you a question. And then you have only 15 seconds to prepare your, your response. And then it's like, oh my God, I'm just so pressured. How am I going to do this? And you want to give the perfect response, right? You want to make sure that you give a response that the grader is going to like. Many of my students are afraid to give an answer because they're afraid they're going to give a response that the grader doesn't agree with and the grader is going to give them a low score. Well, you can stop worrying about that because the grader has no opinion. They have no opinion at all. All they know is the rubric. Did you answer the question in English only? Did you answer the question completely? Did you speak clearly with no long pause or extra words interjected? Did you use uh, relevant reasons, examples, and details? Did you use connection words and phrases? Did you have proper grammar? And did you use complex sentences? Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. Click. They hit submit. And then the program gives you your score. But let's go back to that 15 seconds. Doesn't that give you a hard time? Wouldn't you like to have more time? Well, I know this is terrible. But in my TOEFL online video course, I tell you exactly how to get more time without cheating, by the way. We never cheat. What we do is develop our skills to match or exceed ETS's requirements so that you can earn a respectable passing score. You know, the first question is asking you if you agree or disagree with a certain statement or which of these two choices you agree with. And you have to state your response and you have to give reasons and supporting information for why you have your reason. And many students are freaked out because they don't have enough time, 45 seconds, oh, I don't have time to respond. Or maybe you have too much time and you need to fill in that extra space. Well, there's a way of responding that is very simple. In fact, the way ETS wants you to respond is very basic and very simple when you know how to do it. So when you're responding, let me give you a little tip. First question, five sentences. Okay, five sentences. The requirements are that you must answer the question. So your first sentence, speak to your purpose. Answer the question. Do you agree or disagree with the statement? Or which choice do you agree with? Just say, just say your answer. And then you have to follow up with two reasons and, re and related information for each, for each. Yeah, see, I get nervous too. All right, so you have to have two reasons, a minimum of two reasons because the question asks you to give reasons and supporting information. I have students that ask me, Mr. Can I just give one reason and give lots and lots of details? No, you can't. I mean, you could, you'd have to test again. Of course you could do it if you want, but ETS has requirements. You must do what they want you to do. It's all about obedience, right? Know what's required of you and obey. That's what ETS wants. So you're going to give two reasons. Now you might think it's really hard to come up with perfect reasons. It is. Don't. 
you don't need to come up with perfect reasons. It doesn't say perfect reasons. It says relevant, right? Relevant reasons. So what you want to do is have reasons that are relevant. Do not use templates. If you use a template, I'm going to scream. Don't use templates. They're wrong. Don't argue with me. Don't ask me questions about it. They're wrong. Use the structure that's required of you by ETS. Now, when you're giving your reasons, you might think, but mister, I can't come up with two reasons in such a short time. Well, you know what? If you agree with something, you already have a reason you agree. And if you have a reason, you already have supporting information of why you agree. So automatically, you've got the first one. Now you just have to come up with the second one, right? You just need a second reason and supporting examples and details to go with that. And when you're done, Close your lips. Now, here's the thing. You have to take notes. If you haven't taken notes before in the speaking section, you've got to take notes. If you want to pass this test the next time, learn to take notes appropriately the way ETS wants you to. That's what this test is all about. It's about college study skills. They want to know, hey, can you take appropriate notes and use your notes to give a response? Prove it. Okay? So you're going to take notes. And I teach you exactly how to take your notes. And then when you take your notes, you're going to look at your notes one note at a time and give your response in the order that ETS requires it and the way they require it and done. Now, maybe you get nervous and you speak fast. So maybe you've answered the question. You've given your two reasons and supporting information. And you've only used 30 or 35 seconds. You're thinking, I have another 10, 15 seconds left. Well, other tutors will tell you, you have to fill up that time and give a conclusion. Don't. Just don't. When you're done with your notes, stop. Close your lips and wait for the next question. You do not have to speak for a full 45 seconds. Yes, they say that responses that go longer score better, but not necessarily because if you have answered the question, Given your first reason and supporting information, given your second reason and supporting information, and then you say, um, uh, because you want to say something more, well, guess what? When you said that, uh, or um, you just lost a half a point, and now you have to test again. So stop while you're ahead. You may have given a perfect response in 30, 35 seconds, and you're done. Close your lips and wait for the next question. Speaking of the next question, the next question is complex, right? Because you have to read an announcement and then you have to listen to two people talk about the announcement. And then in the end, you're going to have to either summarize the announcement and state the person's opinion and the reason why they hold their opinion or just summarize the person's opinion and state why they hold their opinion. Now, you're going to have to take notes again. It's all about study skills. Do you know how to take notes? And do you know how to take notes in the way that we want you to respond? The way ETS, not me. Okay, <laughs> keep in mind. The, what I'm teaching you is not my way. It's ETS's way. And that's why it works. That's why all of my students pass. And you will too, if you follow what I teach you. You're going to read an announcement. You'll have like 45 seconds to read an announcement. You don't have to read the whole thing. You do not have to read the entire announcement. You will never, ever, ever be asked to summarize the entire announcement. So don't do more work than is required. You have to read the first one or two sentences. Remember, what you're looking at is, what's it about? What's the announcement about? What's the major topic? And what does it say about it? And just that'll be in the first one or two sentences. So just take notes of that. And then wait for the conversation. The conversation is going to be between a man and a woman, or they say a male and a female. And typically the female, the woman is the one who has the opinion. And the man is just talking, so you have time to take notes of what the woman is saying. It's really not that complicated once you know how it works. So as you're taking notes, the woman's going to give her opinion. She's going to state the reason why she has her opinion. She's going to give you an example and a detail that supports her reason. And she's going to give a second opinion. She's going to state why she has that opinion. And she's going to give examples and details of that support her opinion. Wait a minute. Doesn't that sound like the first question? It's the same structure, right? Right? State your opinion, why you hold your opinion, support it with examples and details. So that's what 
you're going to take notes on those things. It's a little more complicated than that. And I show you exactly how to take notes in my online video course. So you get a chance, go there. If you're struggling and you don't want to take this test anymore, take my class so I can help you, okay? Let's look at question number three. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot. You know, at the end of question number two, they're going to ask you to summarize the announcement and state the woman's opinion and why she holds her opinion. Or they're just going to ask you to summarize the woman's opinion and state why she holds her opinion. Listen to me. If they ask you to summarize the announcement, just state what it's about, nothing else. And then go into stating the woman's opinion, why she holds her opinion, and give both opinions and related information. If they only ask you to summarize the woman's opinion, scratch out the notes you have about the announcement and simply give the woman's opinion in the way that ETS requires you to do so. And I teach you exactly step-by-step step how to do that. So there's no way you can make a mistake. Question number three. Question number three is probably the most challenging question on the entire TOEFL IBT. And that is where you have to read passage where they talk about a major topic and then they give you some details about it. And then you're going to listen to a professor talk about a related topic and give some real life examples about it. And you have to summarize that lecture and state how it relates to the reading section. Now, ETS has a very specific way that they want you to respond. And if you respond the way they want you to, you get a high score. If you don't respond the way they want you to, you're going to test again. Now, the secret to this is, and I won't go into details, but I do that in my class, right? But right now, I want to help you with one thing. Maybe you're excellent at taking notes and responding, and there's one mistake that you keep making that everyone makes until they learn how to do it right. When you're responding, you must state what the professor says and state clearly how it relates to the reading and then state what the related information was from the reading. The question asks you to summarize the professor's lecture and state how it relates to the reading. That's what they want you to do. Talk about the professor's lecture. If you're talking about the reading first and how it relates to the lecture, you're going to test again. That's what most people do. So if you really want to know how to answer this question correctly to get a high score, to score the four that you should be getting, then take my course and learn how to do it. Now, finally, question number four. Question number four has got to be the easiest one on the test. I mean, come on. It's a lecture that's about two minutes, two and a half minutes long. The professor has a major topic, right? A general topic. And it doesn't matter what the topic is. Even if you don't know what it is or if it's a, if it's a, a topic that you hated in school or you just feel it boring, it doesn't matter because all this is is something you can take notes on and tell ETS what they want to know so you can pass your stupid test and get on with your life. So this is a topic. It's just a general topic, and they have two examples with related details. So all you're going to do is take notes, and then you're going to respond by stating what the topic is, and that it has two examples. State what the first example is, and the related details, and then state what the second example is, and the related details, and you must obey the rubric. You must state things in the way ETS wants you to state them. And if you do, you get a high score. And I'm not talking about a 26. 26 is ridiculous. If you can speak English, even if you have a, an accent, let me tell you something. You can have an accent. There's nothing in the rubric that says you can't have an accent. You can have an accent, even a strong accent, as long as we can understand what you're trying to say. And I have people that say, well, Mr. A, they want to get rid of their accent and have an American accent. What does that mean? An American accent? Choose a region. If you're going to have an American accent, what accent do you want to have? Do you want to have a Southern accent? Hey, y'all, what I'm, my opinion is, right? Or maybe you want to come from Louisiana and say, y'all, um, I'm talking about my opinion. This is my opinion, so what I'm talking about. Hey, there are people in the United States and different regions that when they're on the news, we have to use subtitles to understand what they're trying to say. So don't think that 
you need to change who you are or how you speak in order to get a high score, you don't. You be you. You're so much better than you think you are. The only problems that you have is that you really don't know what ETS requires of you. And that makes us nervous, right? And that causes us to make mistakes. But when you know exactly what to do and how to do it, and you practice a little bit to get good at it, you can do it. And if you still want to know how to do things, hey, just ask me. I also do evaluations. Speaking evaluations, right? You can go to my website, click in the store, go to speaking evaluations, and record your four responses. And I will give you a full response, right? That's a full uh, comprehensive response of how you're doing. In other words, I don't just give you that two or three and say that you're a high level or a low level. I tell you exactly what you did was right. And I also tell you what you did, what you need to do to improve. You see, in my class, you're either doing what you need to do to get a high score, or I teach what you need to do to get that high score. And I'm talking about a respectable passing score, not a perfect score. Okay. What you're looking for is a score of 27 or more in each section, and I can help you get there. I mean, ETS has rules. That's the beauty of their test. It's not hard. It's just tricky. They have very specific structures and rules that they require you to use to answer questions. And if you know what to do, it's easy. Okay. That's enough for that. Let me see. Anything else that I can help you with at this time other than just tell you, go take my course so you can pass this stupid test and get on with your life. I know many of my students are working as assistants, right? And that's horrible. You know, you need to have the career you deserve, the one that you worked so hard for. And I know that you worked really hard. And I know you got a lot of guts to get here. And I want to help you to get past this stupid test so you can get on with your life and start earning the money you deserve. Okay, that's it. Now, listen, if I've helped you at all in this video, please subscribe, like, share, ring the bell. You know what to do. And I'll see you in the next video.